Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we continue talking about the Tao with a narrative story on the language of the Tao. Um, really, we're going to be looking at the way that the Tao names are structured, because when you take a look at something as simple as a person's name or a Tao name, you understand the importance that gets instilled within their language, and of course, you get to understand their language. This is going to be uh, displayed to you guys in the form of a narrative report written by an imperial magos or an imperial uh, savant who took down this information from interactions with the the Tao. Uh, so I, again, this is going to be narrative, not so much fact-based, but we haven't really been doing fact-based information in a really long time. Uh, just, just for all those people that are commenting and saying, these aren't facts, there's facts within the narrative. Um, but either way, if you guys have any suggestions for topic ideas, uh, please comment down below. Don't forget to put suggestion followed by whatever Warhammer 40k content you want us to create a video about. And if you guys like this type of narrative storytelling hit the like button um we really want to collect that information and the best way for you guys to communicate with us is number one the comments just write out what you what you're thinking and then number two uh definitely hit the like button if you like this narrative style and not so much just facts being thrown at you um with that said let's get into 40 facts about the Tao language at the request of the explorator magos don aquila I began studying on the language and dialect of the race known as the Tao. It is a complex, highly evolved form of communication, and even after six months of intense study, with the aid of a team of xenological servitors, I have only begun to scratch the surface of the fluid language. In sound, it is deeply lyrical and soft, with many words and meanings dependent on annotation, glottal emphasis, and even posture. The underlining structure of the language alone took the servitors some two months to break down into recognizable High Gothic. Added to this, its multiple arrangements of syllabaic word groups rendered it difficult and extreme for human vocal cords to pronounce. It will take a skillful linguist indeed to speak even the most basic Tao words and phrases. I would respectfully suggest that my studies into the alien language would render my humble self an ideal candidate for further contact with this highly developed race. The Tao have many ways of referring to one another and their names are worthy of many months of specific study alone. To the Tao, the most important part of their name is the caste they are born into, and this forms the first portion of their identity. Broadly speaking, the Tao are organized into four main castes that correspond to their four elements, fire, shash, earth, fuel, air, core, and water, pour. Each caste fulfills a distinct role within the Tao civilization and seems to harp back to the evolutionary development of the race. The fire caste are the soldiers of the Tao, and I was fortunate enough to see some of these fearsome warriors training in their armored battle suits. The laborers, builders, and artisans are those Tao of the Earth caste. They are the sustaining caste without whom Tao society could not function. Investigation into the effects of this caste being exterminated should be undertaken. Although I saw almost none of the air caste during my stay here, I understand them to be the messengers and the pilots of the Tao ships. I believe most of the air caste remains in space as it would be hazardous in the extreme for them to return to natural gravity environments. Lastly, the water caste of whom I was to have the most contact with are the diplomats and administrators, those who facilitate the smooth working of other castes. I was also able to gather scattered hints of the fifth caste, whose name, On, can be variously translated as celestial or ethereal but the Tao assigned to me steadfastly refused to be drawn to this subject. I shall forward further information on this caste as I obtain it. With the caste of the Tao established, the second portion of their name appears to refer to their rank within the society. The Tao are perhaps unique in all the species I have encountered in that there is no stigma attached to any rank or profession. Each Tao has his or her place in society and enjoys the respect of their peers no matter how menial a task they perform. Each role is recognized as being part of the greater whole and a furtherance of the common good. There appears to be five major levels of Tao rank, each of which has a subtle different meaning dependent on the caste to which it is affixed. 
In ascending order of seniority, these ranks are as followed. La is a warrior. We is a veteran. Vre is a hero. L is a noble or possibly knight. And O is a commander. I have included the best imperial equivalent of each rank based upon the nuisance of the fire cast. Next in the Tao's name comes its sept, which translates as either its extended family or place of birth. This portion of the Tao name is open to the widest interpretations and has many subtle differences in meaning. For example, Tao from one of the elder worlds may be perceived as wiser or more sophisticated by implications than one from a younger sept who in turn are regarded as more dynamic and practical. Certain worlds also contain meaning in themselves and can embody a particular trait within the Tao who originate from these worlds. For example, the name of the Tao planet of Vyorla, meaning hot-blooded, and is known as a particularly aggressive firecast word. Other such planets include Bork-An, which is regarded as the center of learning and study. I have yet to plumb the full implication of the sept and their overall relation to the Tao society, but shall assuredly continue to do so. Lastly comes a Tao's individual name, and it appears that these names are earned in recognition of some achievement rather than given at birth, as in the case with humans. It is also possible for more remarkable individuals to accumulate more than one name in their lifetime. Some of the more notable Tao I was introduced have literally dozens of names. I have since learned that it is more common for these Tao to truncate their full names and be known by a much simplified appellation. As an example of how the Tao titles translate, the name Shas O Viorla Shova Kais Montrier can be broken down as follows. This individual is a member of the fire caste, Shash, holds the rank of Commander O, hails from the world of Viorla and has the personal name that translates as farsighted, chauvin, skillful, kais, and blooded, montier. However, this Tao is more commonly known as Oshova, or Commander Farsight, and this form of address is much more popular with Tao of greater accomplishments. How the Tao referred to and address one another adds to yet another layer of complexity to the relationship and language. For example, referring to a Tao by its individual name is regarded as overly familiar unless the Tao is part of a Ta Lisera, which basically means communion or marriage. It is considered polite to refer to a Tao by their caste name and rank as this acknowledges his or her place in society. As noted earlier, there is no shame in performing menial tasks and by referring to the Tao's role as a form of address, that task is recognized and respected. Each individual is seen as contributing to the advance of the race and is therefore worthy of respect. Another term that came up in relation to the Tao forms of address as spoken about earlier is the Ta Lisera, the best translation which the Xenoloxicon could derive for this word was communion or marriage. It appears to be some kind of sworn bond where groups of Tao pledge support and community to one another. The Tao who have sworn their pledges may address each other by their individual names and are much admired. This bond is seen as the ultimate Tao expression of respect for one another, as it symbolizes the sacrifice of individual pride to become part of a greater whole. The Talisir is most commonly found within the ranks of the Firecast Warriors and Earthcast Worker teams, and I must confess, it seems to be a notable and worthy concept. Another note that I studied was the way that the Tao keep time. The Tao Kir is an annual cycle for a Tao. A Tao Kir is broken down into six Kairodas, each of which has 80 Rodas. Each Kairoda is dedicated to a caste with the additional of one dedicated to the race as a whole. A Roda is broken down into 10 decks. Decks are either light times or dark times. Most Tao need only one to two decks of sleep per rota. One word that I found most intriguing about the Tao language is Mont Ao, which translates as the terror. The Tao race's worst nightmare. The time before the coming of the ethereal caste, when the other caste were set against one another. A barbaric time of war that the Tao feared could return should any Tao put themselves before the greater good. 
And those were 40 facts about the Tao language. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there's more Tao information to come, so please subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the like button. We're really going to be paying attention to whether you guys like this narrative. Well, whether you guys continue to like this narrative way of us telling the lore. Uh, rather than um, what we were doing before, like a long time ago, when we were just giving you fact after fact. And people started complaining that that's not good. But now we're getting a lot of people complaining that they don't like the narrative. So the best way for you guys to communicate with us is, like I said, just comment down below or hit the like button. Either way, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and share. If you guys share this video with your friends, it really helps us out. And it helps us continue what we're doing. And it tells YouTube that you want to see Warhammer 40k content. So it's a good way to um, for you to explore Warhammer 40k on YouTube with like other YouTubers if you like and uh, comment on Warhammer 40k videos just to let you know uh, thank you guys so much for listening I'll talk to you guys tomorrow this was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out